Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to tackle some multi-step multiplication number stories. We are in our math journals, volume 2, on pages 188 and 189, Planning a School Fair. So let's read the premise of these story problems. Ian and Sarita are planning the Quincy Elementary School Spring Fair. Ian gathered information about possible entertainers, while Sarita gathered information about possible food choices. They presented their information to the school principal in the tables below. Now, I'm sure you've been in a situation like this where you've been presented a multitude of choices or variables to contend with. Like, say, walking into a restaurant and looking over the dozens upon dozens of entrees uh, listed in the menu. Or maybe you've got a uh, big box of Lego bricks and you're thinking of all the different combinations you can use those bricks to build some sort of creation. Okay, well, whatever your, uh, your task, you've got to think about what parts that you have to deal with, and you need to think about what you're going to do with those parts in order to move forward. Okay? So let's take a look at this first story problem. How much more would it cost to hire the tumblers than the singing group? How much more would it cost to hire the tumblers than the singing group? A lot of information right there. When I hear the phrase, how much more, I know I'm going to subtract. Well, what am I going to subtract? Well, I'm going to subtract the difference between the cost of the tumblers and the cost of the singing group. So I consult my table. There are eight tumblers in the group, and they will perform for three hours, and each tumbler would be paid $22 an hour. Now that, in comparison to the singers who have four members in their group who would perform for three hours, and they would only be paid $16 per hour. So when I construct this problem, i got to first figure out how much the tumblers are going to charge. So I need to multiply the number of people that are going to be involved, which is eight, times the number of hours they're going to perform, which is three, times the amount they're each going to be paid per hour, which is $22. And then what I need to do is I need to uh, subtract the difference of how much it would cost to uh, pay the singers. And there are four singers, four people, and they would perform for three hours, and they would each be paid $16 an hour. And that would give me my total, my answer with an unknown will say uh, E for entertainment. How's that? Now I need to come up with some estimates that are going to help me get into the ballpark of the right answer. So I'm going to start with the tumblers. Now if I round each of these numbers to the nearest 10, I'm going to run into some trouble with 3. Because if I round 3 to the nearest 10, it's going to round down to 0. And I don't want to multiply anything by 0. So I'm going to leave 3 where it is. But I will use 8 and round that to 10. That rounds up. So 10 people times 3 hours times $20, rounding down 22. And then I would subtract that from 4 people times 3 hours, because again, 4 and 3 are, are single-digit numbers that would round down to 0 if rounded to the nearest 10. And then I'll just multiply that amount by $20. 16 rounded up would go to 20. Okay. Now, with these uh, rounded, estimated uh, number sentences, I can pretty much do the math in my head. So when I look at 10 times 3 times 20, I know that 10 times 3 is going to give me 30. And if I multiply that by $20, I'm really just looking at 3 times 2 here. 3 times 2 is, of course, 6. But 3 tens times 2 tens is going to be 600, or 6 with two zeros. Then when I get to 4 times 3 times 20, well, I know that 4 times 3 is 12. And then 12 times 20 is just like saying 12 times 2 with a 0 behind it. And you and I both know that 12 times 2 is going to give me 24. 24 tens, otherwise known as 240. So my subtraction problem, my estimated subtraction problem, is going to be 600 minus 240. So let's write that off to the side. 600 
minus 240. Now I can just ignore the uh, one's place values because it's zero minus zero. That gives me zero. Zero minus four doesn't work, so I gotta borrow a hundred from 600, making it 500 and 10 tens. 10 minus four is six. Five minus two is three. My estimated difference between hiring the tumblers versus the singers is going to be three hundred and sixty dollars. Three hundred and sixty dollars. So now I need to generate uh, my actual answer. So again, I need to take what's in these parentheses here: eight times three times twenty-two, and come up with a, a product that I can then subtract the product of 4 times 3 times 16. So off to the side in my infinite scratch workspace, I'm going to multiply 8 times 3 times 22. Now 8 times 3 is 24, so I'm really going to multiply 24 times 22 dollars. And since these are two two-digit numbers. I'm going to employ some partial products to figure it out. Okay, so 24 times 22 is really just saying 20 times 20, and then 4 times 20, and then 20 times 2, and 4 times 2. Well, 20 times 20 is 400. 4 times 2 is 80. 20 times 2 is 40. And 4 times 2, of course, is 8. And I add all those together, and I'm going to get $528. Got to use that unit. Okay. So my first partial product is $528. Now I'm going to subtract 4 times 3 times 16. Well, 4 times 3, again, is 12. So really what I'm multiplying here is 12 times 16. And again, if I employ partial products, I'm multiplying 10 times 10, 2 times 10, 10 times 6, and 2 times 6. And again, I need to come up with all my little products, my partial products. 10 times 10 is 100, 2 times 10 is 20, 10 times 6 is 60, 2 times 6 is 12. Okay? 100 plus 20 plus 60 plus 12. That gives me a total of $192. So my problem here is now $528 minus $192. Now, in order for me to subtract this properly, I should line up my two numbers vertically. So I'm just going to rewrite 192 underneath 528. Now I subtract. 8 minus 2 is 6. 2 minus 9, that doesn't work. So I need to take a one group of 100 from 500, making it 400, and turning my two tens into 12 tens. 12 minus 9 is 3. 4 minus 1 is also 3, which gives me my difference of 300 and $36, which is not bad compared to my estimation. 360 compared to 336 is pretty darn close. Now, when you look at all of the computation we had to do, this looks rather intimidating. But really, it's just a series of smaller steps, multiple steps, and each step by itself is not that bad. We just need to know what all the multiple steps are before we uh, uh, approach them. Okay? I'm going to set us up for one more problem because we were looking at uh, entertainers. Now let's look at the, uh, the food table of possible costs. Number two says, how much would it cost to buy the burritos and the sandwiches? And see, when I see the word and, that tells me I'm going to be adding. What am I adding? Cost of burritos and the cost of sandwiches. So how much are burritos? Well, it looks like burritos come eight in a package. You would need at least 13 packages, and they cost $3 per P. 
piece. So 3 times 13 times 8. So let's set that up. So, so burritos would cost 8 times 13 times $3. Now I'm going to compare that to the cost of sandwiches. Right? Yep. That brain fart there for just a second. I forgot what I was comparing. Sandwiches come five in package, and you would need 18 packages, and each sandwich costs $6. So five times 18 times $6. I'm going to add that amount. Five per package, 18 packages times $6. So I would do the same thing I did with my tumblers versus singers problem, except I'm going to add the two products instead of subtract them, okay? So I need to multiply 8 times 13 times 3 and add that to 5 times 18 times 6. And again, I would need to uh, round each number uh, to a usable amount because, again, I don't want to round 3 down to the nearest 10 because, again, that would give me 0. Um, and 5 uh, is a pretty uh, easy number to work with, so I don't even necessarily need to round 5 at all. So I might start with, say, an estimation of 10 times 10 times 3. 10 uh, burritos in a package of 10 that uh, cost $3 per package. So it's 10 times 10 times 3 is like 100 times 3 otherwise known as $300. And then when I compare that to 5 times 18 times 6, well, I can take 5 and multiply that by 20, and then let's round down $6 to $5, because that's nice and tidy. 5 times 20 is 100. 100 times $5 is going to give me $500. So my estimated total would be 300 plus 500. And of course, 3 plus 5 is 8. So my total is going to be about $800. That's my estimate. Now you can solve for the actual price. 8 times 13 times 3, and then 5 times 18 times 6. And then you're going to add those two amounts together, which will give you an answer of about 800. Is your head spinning? Are you a little dizzy? Are you overwhelmed? Well, don't be. Like I showed you, each problem is just a series of small steps that we uh, put together in an orderly fashion. But if you're a little uh, turned around about which steps are which, or what steps should come first, or how to do any of this, what you need to do is you need to talk to your math teacher. You need to advocate for yourself that, hey, I need help, or hey, I still don't get this. Or maybe you, you think you get it, but you just want that extra nudge of assurance from that math teacher telling you you're on the right track. Okay, So raise that hand in class. Uh, shoot that uh, virtual teacher a uh, message in their inbox. Or, you know, send smoke signals. Whatever you have to do to get their attention because they are here to help you if they know you need help. If you don't tell them you need help, how are they ever going to know? How are you going to get the help that you need? So talk to them. They are happy to help you. As I am when I create these videos, which I hope have been useful for you. Um, good luck with this uh, math journal assignment, and uh, good luck with your Unit 5 test. Uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks.